Welcome to another Steve Rude video on how I do things. This one, this technique, is uh, involves color, pencil, and watercolor. A word before we begin. Much of the inspiration of this method came from my lifetime of inspiration from my friend, Drew Struson. So let's get into this here. Uh, this, this first step is drawing. You know, the drawing is the basis of everything. I think everyone knows that. The work that I've chosen for this demo is from John Sargent, who worked during the 18 and 1800s. In my circle of diehards, Sargent is unparalleled. One glance at his work settles any claim to his mastery. Further, Sargent was a major influence on all my favorite illustrators that came just after him. So my first step is to draw the thing in. I'm working on hot press Fabriano watercolor paper. So to do this, to draw this thing in, I have marked off the heads on the photo that I'm working from and transferred these measurements to the board I'm working on. And based on these marks, I was able to keep the figure in proportion at this larger size. And then I just drew it in. When Sargent himself painted his portraits, he probably made a few proportion marks to get his bearings of where everything was going on the canvas and then began massing in the big shapes with this huge, fairly huge flat brush. This wash colored pencil thing that I'll be showing you here seems to require a bit more restraint, a little more careful approach. Uh, watercolor board is a little more sensitive than canvas, which you can just scrape and wipe and do anything you want with it. So that's why a little planning uh, might be in order. Anyway, let's get down to the good stuff and see how this is going to turn out. I might be as surprised as you are. Step two, watercolor. As Sargent himself would do, using his oil paints and brushes, the watercolor process for step two that I'm using here is to mass in the big shapes. Uh, this is the way I was taught uh, to do any kind of artwork, mass in the big shapes and then get to the little ones later on. Uh, so far, you can see that I have a pretty good linear block in, which is the pencil part, showing where everything is going, hopefully in proper proportion. So now comes the large masses of, of paint, washes of paint in my case, uh, done in watercolor. Let your eyes drift and you'll see how simple the design of this painting is. It's a simple light shape over a dark shape. But yeah, easier said than done. Some people, instead of using watercolor washes at this stage, often resort to the convenience of an airbrush. Uh, I used to have an airbrush at one time, but <laughs> No matter how meticulous I tried to use it, it was, it was the clogging of the brush that drove me the most crazy. Um, further, no matter how many experts showed me how to overcome the problem, it never seemed to transfer over to yours truly. So, no airbrush. 
So I was forced to adapt the beauty of the airbrush to watercolor washes. For me, this actually feels more right, in quotes. Uh, I simply apply a few washes over the pencil drawing to tone and color the thing to the proper saturation, and then I'm off to the races. I should add at this point, no matter how many pictures I've drawn and painted using the same tools and materials, much of this process still seems to be a journey into the unknown. Yeah, I've got years of experience to back me up, but I don't even know myself quite what I'm in for sometimes, so we're just going to throw ourselves into it. It was Sargent who set the pace for my favorite illustrators uh, during both the war years, one and two. Sargent was the all-time master who painted many high society portraits, such as the one I'm copying here. I mean, look, look at these things. They were so lifelike that you would almost think they were looking back at you. thing to mention about these tutorials that you see on YouTube and any other tube. Most of the guys doing their various demos and tutorials just seem to float effortlessly through the process with hardly a mistake or a look back. They almost all make it look easy and that's where the problem lies. Myth number one, it's not easy. I have never had a piece go from beginning to end without numerous snags and often hair pulling frustrations. Drawing a stick figure might be easy, everything else is hard. And those who make it look easy without do-overs or making mistakes should have their artistic reality card revoked. Even the most practiced people can be found having to change gears and make huge corrections in their work to take that beautiful head you just spent a day rendering and just wipe it from the canvas because it's not going well. What kind of exact frustrations are we talking about? Well, I'll be talking about those very problems as we progress forward in the demo. What you're looking at here is the portrait of Sargent's head actually superimposed over my own attempt, which to me looks pretty accurate. I guess this shows that a lifetime of study and practice really does pay off. So far, the drawing part is going okay, but I have to stand back a lot to see if things are keeping in proportion, regardless of how accurate the head measurement process is supposed to make it. So even if you trace or project your images, things still need to be viewed, I would say, from a healthy distance to see if proportions from any part of the picture are out of whack or need adjusting. I can see that we need more washes of watercolor before we're ready for the next phase. 
So let's keep adding some more of those layers. the colored pencil stage. Now that the drawing is done and the watercolor washes are applied, now we get to the colored pencil stage. First, uh, make sure the paint is dried or the colored pencil wettish surface will dig lines into the board. If you don't want that to happen, make sure it's perfectly dry before you start. A word on colored pencils. I've tried them all, and to me, Prismacolor still works fine with me. The others that I prefer, because they have soft leads, are the Luminance colored pencils, which are more light fast and therefore more expensive. Other pencils, like the famously popular Polychromos, are too hard to fit my temperament, and I like pencils to go on soft, not hard. So the Prismas seem to work best. Um, these fingers are confusing to me. Mm. Am I giving her two left hands? Typical me. Colored pencils, by the way, start out like any other art or paint product. They start out looking like a crumbled colored dust, like a block of sulfur for a yellow color, and then add wax and clay to form them into pencil form. I remember actually calling up the Prisma company itself to find out more about their pencils and they were so corporate and so robotic about it, I just hung up on them. As you might imagine, using anything made with wax has some problems. One that I rarely seem to hear about, but for a few smart people bringing it up on YouTube videos. Here's the problem. Imagine painting with a wax candle. That's kind of what it's like working with colored pencils. Pretty soon, the layers stop sticking to each other. It feels like you've suddenly put on a pair of ice skates and you're slipping and sliding all over the place. Yeah, this drives me nuts. So when this does happen, what do you do? Well, I learned to just erase the damn stuff and build things up again. If that doesn't work, I wash everything down to the board and I'll take some of the wax off with an eraser, uh, which you'll see me doing at some point on this piece. Yeah, it's kind of like wax on, wax off. Another thing you can do, which you'll see me doing later, is I'll go over the waxy colored pencil with a slightly opaque paint. This kind of creates a new surface to start things over again on. The opaque paint also helps to take some of the distracting grainy look out of the colored pencil. So this kind of disguises things to look smoother. Paint and pencil do two different things. Paint soaks into the surface and is smooth, and pencil tends to just go over the bumps in the paper. Now that's also why I like working on a smooth watercolor paper surface. 
So that's what I go through when I run into trouble using the convenience of colored pencils. Why do you think it took me about 100 trials to understand this stuff? I mentioned having to erase the colored pencil on occasion. Uh, yes, if the pencil starts to build up too much wax, or the line I drew in earlier is showing through too much, I just erase. Get a good eraser and erase it. We as artists have to deal with all these variables with every medium and it's up to us to figure a way out of it. So why even use colored pencils? Well to me, pencil is fun to use. In, in this case, I use the colored pencil to give the painting a few selective hard edges. Like you're a sculptor carving something out of rock. That's why I keep the wash stage in soft focus. I'm starting with something soft, a little dark and a little out of focus, and then you can lighten things up with a colored pencil and bring things into focus. On the matter of hair, I tend to look at hair as a solid mass with just a few finessed details to show it's different from skin or cloth. I suggest first looking for the main color, which here is dark brown, and then adding the lighter and darker colors to make things look more round or dimensional. Again, taking my cue from the masters, I've learned to see hair this way rather than a bunch of tiny wisps of detail. Is anything confusing to you all so far? Well, here's the simple version to all that procedure stuff. Here's a demo sheet to explain everything a little easier. Seeing is believing, right? And that's what artists tend to like to do. They see it rather than hear it. So let's see it. First comes the watercolor wash part, normally over the pencil drawing. Then the colored pencil goes over that. If you make a mistake, just erase it as best you can and try again. Then there's always the option of using thin washes or heavier dry brush type paint uh, to smooth things out again.
You see, folks, everything in art has its snags and blessings. All of us are just students, and everything is a work in progress. Will we ever work out all the problems, technical and emotional, of being an artist, a human being? No, but we can try. Steve Rude, age 62, April 2019.